Nick Denton is here for his first network interview since challenging Silicon Valley billionaire Peter Thiel to a public debate. Thiel confirmed last week that he secretly spent about $10 million bankrolling lawsuits against Gawker. In one of them, a jury awarded retired pro wrestler Hulk Hogan $140 million. This dispute began in 2007 when a Gawker website outed the PayPal co-founder as a gay man. Thiel told the New York Times Gawker is a terrible bully. He called the lawsuits one of the, quote, great philanthropic things that I've done. Denton called Thiel a thin-skinned billionaire who wants to bankrupt Gawker. Denton has hired an investment banker to exploit possible sale of his company. He founded Gawker Media in 2002. It is reportedly worth at least $250 million. Nick Denton is in Studio 57 with us for his first interview. I think it maybe was worth $250 million <laughs> before this lawsuit. It, it, it may very well be true, but just to clear it up, is it for sale? Uh, we, we have to look at every single contingency. Um, when you have a, an angry billionaire against you, uh, I think it's quite right to look at every single contingency. Okay, so let's. your biggest anger is that Hulk Hogan won the lawsuit against you or that Peter Thiel helped Hulk Hogan? This is a complicated story. So it uh, began as a story about a sex tape um, that Hulk Hogan had himself been talking about. Uh, it turned out that his motives for pursuing the lawsuit weren't to do with that, but were to do with racist remarks on another tape. And now it seems that there's a story behind even that story, um, a billionaire on a 10-year mission to actually bankrupt a media company. I've read the open letter that you wrote to Peter Thiel where you said there have undoubtedly been occasions where we overstepped the line. Where have you crossed the line or overstepped it? I mean, this is a story I don't particularly want to talk about um, that much because uh, it was bad enough at the time uh, for the person involved. But there was a story last year um, about a, a media executive's personal life um, that I regret that we published. You uh, published and, a story. And, 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 and I said so and we took down You published a story that this person had contacted a male escort. Uh, the story was along those lines. So I think this is important because also the question about the Hulk Hogan sex tape. What is the news value in publishing a sex tape? Well, first of all, we didn't publish a sex tape. Uh, we published snippets of a sex tape uh, to accompany a story about this famous, famous wrestler who had talked a lot about his sex life, uh, had made it a matter of public interest. Uh, and um, uh, the relationship that he had with his best friend and his best friend's wife. Um, I, we thought it was a, a valid story. Uh, we still think it is. A federal judge deemed it newsworthy, and we believe the appeals court will find the same. And what is no regrets of, about publishing the snippets of it. He, just because he talks about it, I'm thinking, doesn't mean he wants everybody to see it. No, absolutely. Um, but when somebody actually does <clears throat> make something a public, uh, to a topic of public discussion, uh, they can't be that surprised when others jump in and the narrative goes in a direction that they don't necessarily want. Did you know Peter Thiel was involved in this case? And when you found out, Nick, what did you think? We had, we had some suspicions, but um, it seemed crazy. Like the idea that there would be somebody uh, behind this, that there would be some long standing plan, um, that somebody would be spending $10 million, maybe more than $10 million funding a whole, looking for cases, funding a whole series of cases uh, against a media company um, because they didn't like critical coverage. I, I, I think we should actually just, we should. He said some innocent people were hurt. That was his mm -hmm. rationale. He, 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 said that, <coughs> he said that friends of his had been right. hurt um, by our publications. <coughs> and he has many friends in, among the Silicon Valley elite. You know, but you know, look, at, look at the stories. Look at the stories about him. Criticism of the performance of his hedge fund, Clarium. Uh, criticism and mockery of his views on uh, whether American democracy Which su suggests, su Nick, su that he, suffered. That, that suggests after, that he's not afraid of being criticized. He doesn't mind people criticizing, but at some point he thinks it goes over the line. You've said that sometimes Gorka goes over the line. Sort of help us understand where you come down on that. Well, uh, the, the other irony here is that you know, he is as we are a beneficiary of free speech and free press in this country. Uh, he has very controversial views on whether women should have the vote, uh, on immortality, uh, on seasteading, an effort by libertarians to separate themselves from terrestrial government. Uh, and you know, we've run, written stories which are critical. You know, we take our, our position 
seriously as uh, the independent alternative press. Uh, and we've written stories that have absolutely upset both celebrities like Hulk Hogan and mm -hmm. Silicon Valley elite. Let's but he get, describes let's get Gawker specific. as a bully. He describes Gawker as a bully. How do you describe what you do? What is the audience you're trying to reach? I think it's a little rich for right. somebody worth $2.7 billion who spent a portion of their fortune uh, really to describe anybody else as a bully. Let me get specific here. Peter Thiel has argued that some of the stories were painful and paralyzing for people who were targeted and that most of these people cannot afford to fight back. We have a couple of the headlines that you've had on Gawker in the past. A lot of these stories focus on people's sexuality, um, specifically uh, whether they're gay I, or, I should, or, or not. Does, does he have a point in that regard? Is it relevant? We've published about a million posts uh, over the course of the company's existence. Most of them are reviews of video games, uh, new cars that have come out, mm -hmm. stories like Gizmodo's story about the Facebook, Facebook. Mm -hmm. news headline, the, the did, way that did, Facebook cho chooses Gawker, news headlines. Did Gawker it's, it's, out it's, it's, Peter it's, Thiel it, in 2007? No, I don't, actually don't believe that we did. Uh, he, he told The New Yorker in 2003, uh, that in 2003 uh, he was already open with friends. If you actually read the piece, the piece written by a gay writer, I am gay myself, uh, written by a gay writer, was a, was a piece celebrating the fact that the most talented venture capitalist in Silicon Valley was gay, in a, in a largely straight male world, um, that, that he was gay. I think that's as worthy of note. Uh, as whether somebody, whether Carly Fiorina was the first mm -hmm. powerful female executive in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. it, it's, not a, it's not something to be shamed, ashamed of. It's not something shameful. And I think it's actually weird for people to behave like it is. Two quick points. Number one, if in fact you knew that Peter Thiel would come after Gawker, if you knew that, would you have not run the story? Now that your company is at risk, well, when, would, you had, would it have had a chilling effect? When Peter Thiel invents time travel as well as a solution to mortality <clears throat> and lets me go back in time and, and speak to my former self, right. um, okay. th th then, then maybe I would tell my... I had uh, another question then, Nick, before we go. <laughs> well, uh, there are lots of people who spend lots of money to help indigent uh, and try to exonerate people on death row. I mean, there are other examples where people spend their money to help people in lawsuits. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Peter Thiel um, is, well, Peter Thiel's lawyer is working on behalf of two people that we know of. Peter Thiel hasn't confirmed which lawsuits he's behind. You know, one is somebody who claimed that he invented email about 10 years after email was invented. And the other person is a journalist who was collecting a dirt file uh, on two um, co-founders of Tinder who were in a fight with each other. Right. I think anybody who actually looked at those stories would actually <laughs> would say, What's this about? If the uh, verdict stands, can you stay in business and will you change the way you operate? Well, we don't believe that the verdict will stand because uh, this, in terms of the Hulk Hogan yes. verdict, we don't believe that the Hulk Hogan verdict will stand. You know, $140 million. In terms of the money, though, not, not in terms of yes. the, the decision. Well, actually, I think in terms of the decision, too. A federal judge already determined that the story was newsworthy. Right. The appeals court has on several occasions ruled in our favor. Um, we lost Will you uh, in change the local the way you state. operate, Nick, because I, of this? I think, I think society has already changed and the media has already okay. changed that okay. um, there's less demand now amongst our readers, amongst our four million each weekday readers. Um, there's less demand for the kind of cr highly critical journalism that there was maybe five or ten years ago. Nick Denton, thank you for being here. Thank you.